How is everybody tonight? Thank you, Jerry Brown. Y'all go ahead and stand up. We're ready to worship. We hope you're ready to worship. We're expectant. We need God more and more. So let's come together. Before we get started, guys, can we just can we just start out with just maybe going to a neighbor and just walk around and just invite you know, one another in this place? Just walk to your neighbor and say, hey, I'm glad that you're in the God's house. How many of y'all come expecting something from God today? How many of y'all expect for something from God tonight? That's what we're doing here, right? We're here to expect something from you, God. We love the Lord.
Sometimes when we just hear the whisper, that goes further than any kind of miracle because we get the word, we get that, we know. And when we get that whisper, I can 
can go on from generation to touch generation like Elijah. He heard the whisper in Kings where it says is that God wasn't in the storm, God wasn't in that, but he heard the whisper of it. And Elijah went on to anoint Elisha, and Elisha went off to anoint to another king and another king, and it, and it touched three generations. So tonight I ask you again, did you come for a regular service or did you come to worship and pour out your love and your praise to God? It's time, church, to stand up. It's time to be who we are. We are chosen generation. We are chosen. At this time, we're chosen. sing this one more time. We give you praise. And just sing it from your heart. Just sing. Just let your worship just fill this place tonight. We got a list of music. Pastor's got a sermon. But let's just wait on God and let's worship Him tonight. And let's God be God and let Him do what He wants to do in this place tonight.
Slip your hand up in this place. We're going to sing this again. We're going to declare this over the person. We're going to move out of a comfort zone. We're just going to, we're just going to trust God. As Peter did. As everybody else said, the, boat, the Lord called and said, Come here. To break every chain. Break 
every chain, Lord. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. This evening, I talked to Joshua before he started about having some extended worship. And so I want to give it just a little bit more time. But when God begins to talk to me about physical ailments and words of knowledge, uh, it usually comes in physical response for me. And uh, I usually don't talk about it much in a church that I'm at home in because I know everybody. But just a moment ago, I began to have some feeling in my, my left kidney area back that's just not mine. And so if you're here tonight, and that's you, I believe God's wanting to heal that tonight. So if you have an area in your mid to lower left side, you've got one, a word of knowledge. You want me to come over there? You, an ankle? A right arch, an arch in the right, you're painting the right arch in your foot. We're going to worship a little bit longer. And uh, I don't trust me enough to be exact, but I do trust what God's doing enough to know there's an area. And I've seen Richard uh, be used many times. So if that's you, there's a physical need in your body. As we worship, uh, get Richard, myself, or just ask someone, hey, that was me. And you know the beauty of the, the grace of God when he wants to do it? We don't have to work at it real hard. Someone sitting right next to you, you can say, hey, will you agree with me and declare that's for me? And let's just watch people begin to be healed. I was with my group uh, just before we came here and Chad Teeler began to share his testimony. He said he was, he's due to have surgery on his right knee, maybe his left knee, uh, because of some damage. And the doctor said, it's there. We've got to do surgery on it. Hadn't been able to run. He said, I've had people pray for me. It wasn't doing any good. But last Sunday, there was a word, and we had people come to the front. No one special, just if you have a need, let's go into 2013 saying it's a new season. They said, I started running Monday, and I expected to stop, but I didn't have to stop. And he kept running, and he kept running, and he said, now I don't know what to do. He said, the insurance won't pay for another MRI, but I, <laughs> I don't want to go have surgery for a knee that doesn't hurt. Isn't that a good problem to have? <laughs> That's just God. So let's worship him. Give him a chance to move and see what happens tonight. Amen. If that was you, come on forward.
Isn't he good? Amen. 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 Well, I can tell you, my back doesn't hurt anymore. Richard's arch isn't bothering. You know, it's kind of strange. Pastor had explained that to me one time. I went up to him. I, I've shared this before. I said, I don't know why, but sometimes I get these weird pains out of nowhere. And it's not, they're not bad pains. They're just there. And I know it. And uh, he said, uh, well, Daniel, that's how God's talking to you. <laughs> I thought, well, you should find a better way. <laughs> how about a note? <laughs> but I discovered as I began to listen to it, when I had the courage and confidence to share it, that it was there and people got healed. You know, and that's the beauty of what we share is that God wants to talk to us. And I'm kinesthetic. I'm, a, I'm the kid that was moving in class all the time, had to have something. I was clicking my pen, making noise, shuffling my feet. God, God gets my attention using my body. That's how he made me. That's why I can't stand still and preach. I, my brain locks up if my feet quit moving. But different people are different. Some people have a, just a quieter mind and more in tune, and they're able to hear so clearly. But I want you to know this, that God's always talking to you in a way he designed you to hear. And when he talks to us about what's going on, that's his invitation. He's saying, I want this to change to you. Will you work with me? Will you be involved with me? And so that's what happened uh, tonight. God invites us to be involved with him. Karen feels better. Uh, Sissy, what's going on with you? Had a lot of heat moving a while ago. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? And guys, I want you to know, we're not about a dog and pony show. I believe people can get healed right in their seat with you touching them as much as anything. But we, we just like to gather together and give God a chance to move. Whether it's at the front or at the back, I've just learned that sometimes the movement isn't about anything else but the person getting out of where they were and saying, I'm moving. Because something happens when we move physically. I think we begin to move spiritually. Brother David brought in uh, back on 16th Street, uh, Jeff Finholt. Remember Jeff Finholt? He was speaking and, and I was there begrudgingly. Uh, Mary Beth had just broken up with me on the way to the thing because I wasn't living right. She, because she's Mary Beth, she wanted to sit on the second row. And I'm sitting there not really liking being there. Uh, and he's speaking, but it was good. You know, he talked about ripping a guy's ear off with eight pounds of pressure and stuff I was interested in at the time. And uh, he had a big bodyguard, apparently. And he said this one time, and, and he said, uh, raise your hand if you know right now you're prepared to see God. You're prepared to step into your eternal home. And I didn't raise my hand. I didn't know. I wasn't prepared. And he cheated. He said, hey, you with the red striped shirt on, why didn't you raise your hand? That's cheating in my book. I was angry. And this all has a point. I was feel, and at that point in my life, I liked to, I mean, when I was angry, I decided it was okay to hit. But he had the bodyguard that could rip my ear off with eight pounds of pressure, so it was a toss-up. And so it was either go up on the platform and hit the guy in front of everybody. I had a little bit more cooth than that. So I decided to leave angry. Has any preacher ever said anything that you said, I'm leaving angry? <clears throat> and I went to step out. Well, David, I don't know if you remember it. But I went to step out anger. And as soon as I moved, 
something broke. And I went from leaving angry to snot coming out of my face, <laughs> tears going. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying, heaving crying. And I'm knelt at the front at, at the thing, and I give my life to Christ. I remember saying this. I said, God, I'm coming back. And all I can tell you is I'm not going to be the best, but I promise I'll never leave again. See, my problem was I tried to serve God in perfection, and he let me know I wasn't perfect. And I had to recognize it was by grace. But I say all that, the reason I believe in the altar time and moving out of your seat, because I believe moving does something to our spirits. Because I thought I was moving in anger, and God said, I just needed you moving. And I remembered having an old 59 Chevy without power steering. The steering wheel was about that big on it. Part, it was a booger. But when you get it moving, you could steer it. God just likes us moving sometimes. And he can steer us right where he wants us to go. That's not my sermon for tonight, though. But it does lead us into it. Last week, I talked to you about intimacy and, and spending time with God. And actually, intimacy that led to an assignment. How many of you found your assignment last week? Amen? Amen? We got any testimonies from assignments? No, I just have it. I know what it is. I'm not doing it. I got to, so I had a helper with an assignment. I had a helper say, hey, you've been talking about talking to people in your neighborhood. <laughs> Here's someone you can talk to. So I went and talked to him the next day. Great time. That wasn't my assignment from God, though. I'm still working on that one. But it was a good one. You know what the beauty of it was? My assignment, someone called me and told me of a good thing happening. I got to go to someone's house, hear what God was doing in their lives, got to talk to them, and see that just sharing kingdom. And how God had blessed them and what their hopes were and different things. That's good stuff, guys. That's, that's life on life. That's kingdom. But we're looking for even more than that. What I want to talk about tonight is moving from intimacy to assignment to how do we handle an assignment. What is it? How many of you know when you get an assignment, that's only half the battle? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh... Uh, there used to be those uh, uh, power uh, superhero cartoons. And uh, half the battle was just knowing that there was a battle. And yet, when you get there, what do you do with it? I want to share with you from Luke chapter 10. On where, how do we handle it, and what do we have to bring to the table, and what's provided for us to take the pressure off of us. When there's, a, when there's an assignment Intimacy has brought us to a place of assignment. With assignment, what is our responsibility? In Luke chapter 10, we've preached from this a whole lot over the last four years. Maybe four and a half now. So it won't be a surprising scripture. But this is where the 70 had been sent out. And now they're returning. And I'm picking up in verse 17. I'm going to read 17 through 20. Uh, Luke chapter 10, 17 through 20. It says... Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons believe and are subject, or they don't believe, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I was going all the way to James. And in verse 18, he said, And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I want you to imagine that. Jesus is saying, Look, the very thing you're terrified of, the very thing that zaps you of your strength and, and breeds fear in your heart. I saw him kicked out of heaven. Didn't even cause my father to break a sweat. It didn't cause a clearing of his throat. I think uh, Mike Brown was here and he uh, did the sound. I've had a cold, I better be careful. And he talked about just the breath of his nostril. Just... Boom, Satan fall. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now, we can read this a few ways. 
And I think uh, some people do, and it, it may not be uh, to our benefit. So I'm going to give you how I understand the Scripture studying it. There's two words that are uh, very important there, both authority and power. Authority and power. Authority is exousia. Power is dunamis. Two different words. One is the power like boom, dynamite, dunamis power. A Pentecost kind of power. Boom, big change kind of power. Dunamis. Exousia is a, an authoritative power. That's why it uses the word authority. That It's the like the say-so kind of power. It's the power your mom and dad wielded when you were little. When you said, uh, they say, go to your room. And you said, why? And they said, because, because I said so. It's the because I said so power. It's not the power because I'm going to come beat you up, though your parent could at that time. It's the authority that says, because this is my world, this is my home, and I'm telling you, go. Okay. And see, what, what Jesus is saying is, look, I saw the enemy knocked out of heaven. And I'm telling you, I have the authority, and I'm giving you, I am bestowing upon you the authority. This is what the church hasn't understood effectively yet, I believe. You and I see victory. You and I can step out, and it talks about serpents and power over scorpions. It, Jesus talked about us raising the dead and healing the sick and drinking deadly poison and all these things, and we think, how am I ever going to get holy enough? If, if I could just be like Brother David, it could happen. But until that day, now, Brother David's a great man. I love him, my hero. And yet, I'm not dependent on arriving to a place where Brother David is to see God move miraculously in our lives. That is dependent on the same thing as dependent for Brother David. Because it's not by our merits, it's by the authority of the king that bestowed it upon us. That we get to act in his stead. So like we had a while ago, a word of knowledge, a, a, a something in your heart it's a, it's, I call it many times an inheritance moment. When the Father of lights, when the Holy Spirit, when Jesus quickens your spirit and you know this isn't right. This is something that ought to not be like this. Whether it's a pain and not, you feel it. Whether it's just something you know. Whether it's walking by and something grieves you in your heart and you say, this ought not be this way. In that moment, the authority of heaven says, uh-uh, that ought not be that way. What would you like to do about it? And you don't have to muster up the power. You don't have to wonder about the authority. What you have to do is exercise that which has been bestowed for that moment. It's a divine moment. It is an inheritance moment. It is an asusia moment where we get to go in and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. See, that's what John, James and John did at the Temple Gate Beautiful. It was, that, it was an inheritance moment based on the authority and the power that was bestowed upon them. They didn't do Holy Ghost push-ups before they went there. They didn't get all worked up. Though they may have spent time in God's presence. And we should. And we should hear His voice. And guess what, guys? Here's the key. The reason we need to hear His voice, the reason we spend time in prayer, the reason we spent the whole 2012 in reading our Bibles, it was not to get us spiritually fit enough to do the miraculous. It was to get our ears sensitive enough, sensitive enough to hear the invitation to the miraculous. Do you hear the difference? See, if we're not careful, we'll think we're doing this stuff and we've got all these disciplines and we're reading and because I'm reading, because I'm studying and because Brother David's prayed more than any man I know and because Richard hears from God, yes, they've earned it now. They've built up enough credit in heaven that now God owes them. We know that's wrong. It just sounds wrong, doesn't it? Everything we do is to, is to help our ears to be sensitive and our hearts to be tender so that we can hear God. Because when He talks to us, now we have to understand it's not by my might, it's not by my power, but it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. Do you grab that? So what is authority? It's God say so. He's got the power to do it. Now, You've got to look at the uh, thing that he bestows this 
upon his followers. The ones he says, he says, behold, I give you the authority. Now, what is, uh, what is something that is given to you? It is a what? A gift. Who said that? Don, you're a brilliant guy. Great job. Tony, brilliant. I told you this morning we have Bible scholars here. It's a gift. Now, what does Paul tell the Roman uh, church? The gifts and calling of God are what? Without repentance. That means irrevocable. That means God doesn't give and take it back. So he's saying, I've given you authority. If we say, yeah, but that was, that was before the cross. And, you know, we don't know quite how it worked out. Because, you know, I think the devil had some of the authority that men had forfeited to him. And I don't know about all this. This is, this is the 70, right? Well, didn't the Great Commission tell us this in Matthew? What does it tell us? All authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. Therefore, because I have this, you go. You go what? In my name. You go on what? In heaven's name. That means you carry the authority with you. He told Peter uh, he would give him the keys to the kingdom. Authority. When you've got keys to the office, you've got authority to go in. Do you hear what's going on? Please hear that our intimacy is not to position us for God's favor. It's our intimacy is to position us to hear him clearly. We already have his favor. He's given it to us. You are favored by the Most High. You are highly favored. But you don't know that all the time. I don't know that all the time. How do I know that I struggle with this? How do I know that I struggle with the understanding of authority and power? Have you ever been in a situation where uh, you felt like praying for something, but it, it seemed just too big? I have. You know, I was sharing with my small group today. You've got sinuses, headache, I'm your man. And one of our group uh, members is very edifying to me. She said, oh, you mean the stuff that would go away anyway? <laughs> I said, touche, get out. I mean, uh, I didn't say that. But isn't that what we do? When soon as I go, I may not have enough. I'm thinking I have to work into it. That's my problem. That's why I need to go back to intimacy with God to realize See, the closer I get to God, the realize I didn't, I don't earn anything. It's by grace that I get to have this relationship. And so as soon as I start going, oh, I think this is too big, I go, oh, I don't understand. I don't understand authority and power yet. I'm convinced that what changed in the apostles was when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke with new tongues, they walked out with a power and a boldness like never before, is they finally understood authority and power. Not as something they had to work themselves into, but something that was given to them and they got to exercise. Now, some people could hear me say this and go, oh, so you're saying it doesn't matter how we live. You know, anything could go. Well, if you want to go there, I'm sorry that you want to go there is all I can tell you. I'm not trying to say there's a license for sin. Certainly not, Paul says. What I'm trying to say is this. We, as the body of Christ, have been given the authority and power to change destinies. We have given the uh, authority and power to speak and to death and bring life. We've been, we, we've been given the ability to speak into that which is broken and bring healing and wholeness. And we need holiness. We need personal holiness because that allows us to get closer to God. Why? To get more power? No. To get more authority? No. To hear Him better. So I can hear what's on his heart. So I can hear what's on his mind. So that I know what my assignment is for the day. So that when I'm walking through Wendy's or McDonald's. or I always go to restaurants. Or Walmart or someplace like shopping. You know, you notice I never say the mall. <laughs> Y'all know I'm too cheap. I keep saying Walmart and Kroger. <laughs> Y'all going, that's we don't hang out with you. Garage selling. When you're going garage selling. Anywhere you go. Car shopping. Anywhere you go that you've spent so much time with God, he doesn't have to do a clap of lightning. He just whispers and gives you a nudge. And you hear his voice so well, very naturally, 
you say, excuse me. I just want you to know that I feel like God's just prompted me that there's something going on in your body. And I want you to know, he's telling me that he loves you. And I'd like to pray for you right now that his goodness would overcome you and bring healing. Would you be okay with that? I've never had one person say, God, what? Loves me. I've never been so offended. I'm leaving. No, you can't pray. I don't think I've ever been rejected for a prayer. Have you? I, not that I can think of. But see, here's the beauty of it. I don't have to explain it to them. I just have to know it in my heart. God, talk to me. This isn't a talk him into it moment. This isn't I feel bad for this person and now I need a fix it moment. This is, a, this is an inheritance moment, a divine moment. He's, he's got my attention because he wants to heal it. I just get to exercise the authority. Well, what if you're going by someone and he says, hey, I want, you to, I want you to drop a note to Tony in the mail and encourage him. Well, guess what? I can think, well, I hope I can come up with the right words to say. I wonder if I can, man, if, I'm, if I really get the right words, if I could be like, like Karen Lewis, she's just so eloquent. If I could use those words, I would write him an encouraging note. But I'm not Karen, so never mind. How many have you, have you, have you passed up some good times for some never minds because you talked yourself out of it? Golly, why do we do that? Because we don't understand the authority and the power that's been granted us. We're confused about what intimacy does for us. But when we understand the process and we go, oh, the Holy Spirit just prompted me to write to Tony. I'm about to write a prophetic letter. Woo! And I, I, I don't know what I'm going to say, but it's going to be good. I'm gonna, and you might write something that looks silly to you and you go, but I thought it was going to be good. But Tony gets it and goes, you don't know what those words meant to me. They changed my life. I've heard people tell me that a sermon changed their life. And I said, really, what part of it changed it? And they told me, and I thought, I didn't preach that. <laughs> Somewhere the Holy Spirit got involved. We've got to trust the Holy Spirit can do what we can't do. He's inviting us to work with Him, and He wants to spend time with Him. Yes, He wants us to pray. Yes, He wants us to read His, his Word. Yes, He wants us to fellowship together. Yes, He wants us to spend time in His presence. Why? So we can earn power and authority? No! So that we can know that we have His heart, and our desires are His desires, and He gives us the desires of our hearts because they match His. And when we move in, we're moving in the authority and the power that He's granted us, and suddenly... The impossible becomes possible again. Now, I'm saying that on a day that we buried a five-year-old boy that died of cancer. This world isn't perfect. And my intimacy with God isn't always perfect. But I know this. That no matter whether they're the victories we go through or the defeats we go through, the enemy steals, kills, and destroys, and God gives life. I know this, that I don't see Jesus ever looking at someone and saying, you deserve the sickness. I look at him and he's bringing healing, and he says, go and sin no more. So I choose to get on his side and let him worry about the results. All I need to do is hear when he talks to me and move out. And guess what? Sometimes I've missed. There have been times that I thought that I knew that I knew that I knew that I heard. You think it's easy to get up in front of a church when you know everybody and go, I've got a little pain here on my left side, and I'm pretty sure that's God talking to you. I think it's easy for Richard to stand up on a Sunday morning and share. That doesn't happen because it's easy. It happens because somewhere you've built an intimacy with God that you just trust the process, and guess what? You're going to miss a few along the way. That's okay. That, there's only one that didn't miss any, and we killed him. Right? We're on a journey. So I want to ask you this. It's what I've been talking to you about for a long time. Will you begin to dream big? And will the limitations that you see in your life not be based around the power and authority because it's the power of the king and the authority of the kingdom? We're deputies. We've been deputized. So we're not stopping uh, the enemy in our name. We're stopping him in his name. We're not getting rid of sickness in my name. We're getting rid of sickness in his name. And there'll be times that he says, I didn't talk to you about it. And the crazy thing is, I think God heals those times sometimes too. Just because he can. And there'll be other times that I'll just miss it. 
But please, don't let the misses that happen in life stop us from doing what God's called us to do. I want to finish with this. The disciples had misses. A man came to Jesus and said, I had your disciples pray for my kid, but he's still throwing himself into the fire and having epileptic seizures. He's still demonized. Why didn't your disciples? He said, (laughs) how long am I going to have to be with y'all? A little longer. (laughs) Bring him to me. Then they come to say, Lord, why couldn't we do this? He said, these kind of only go out by what? Prayer and fasting. Oh, and I used to think, oh, I need to pray and fast more because then I'll earn even the hard ones. Do you see where we go to earning? (laughs) Why prayer and fasting? These kind of only go out because you need more intimacy with God to hear exactly what you need to do. I'm convinced that there are some things that we're going through in life that we don't have to. If we would hear him a little more clearly, we have the authority and the power to navigate around it. We just have to hear him a little more clearly. Now, that's not judging me or anyone else. We're on a journey to be like Christ. We're on a journey to learn. But let our learning be the intimacy part. Not, can I build up enough spirituality to be powerful enough? Because if we'll take the power and the authority, responsibility off of us, then we can do what we've really been called to do. Become intimate with God and watch the enemy flee. How many godly people does it take to set the enemy at flight? One. One. If two of us show up, 10,000 are running. (laughs) I mean, just think about it. Just think about it. Where two or more are gathered, I'm in their midst. There's something about the invitation to relationship. So as we leave tonight, we'll spend a little bit more time in worship. I want you to, somewhere in your prayer time, somewhere in your worship time, just say, Father, I accept the fact that anything I ever do for your kingdom will be based on your authority and your power. I will no longer worry about how much power or authority I can produce. I will begin to live my life of worship, my life of prayer, my life of of any discipline I bring to build intimacy with you so I can hear your voice better. I can guarantee you with that simple prayer and a life that follows it, we will see more victories than defeats. We will see more change for the kingdom of God than we can possibly contain. When the church of Jesus Christ awakens to the fact that the only thing that has ever held us back is not a limitation of power, but a limitation of intimacy. Pastor, in your life, what has intimacy meant to you. Have you seen that bit true in intimacy? As far as seeing God move? It's everything. It's everything. How many hours? I get discouraged like anybody else. Draw close to Him and draw close to Him and discouragement leaves. You know what I, when we first started seeing a move of God about three and a half years ago, it was real powerful. People were being healed all the time. I didn't know how to handle some things that people would say, well, you've sought it a long time. And pastor would say, no, we didn't earn it. And yet I knew how much he prayed in the morning and how much he challenged me to pray and how my prayer life had grown because of it. And I, yet I knew it wasn't earning it, but I didn't connect it to intimacy yet. And I didn't know which words to use yet. But I knew there was a court connection between the amount of prayer that I saw out of this man and what I saw in reality. And yet he would say, but I didn't earn it. It wasn't that. You don't understand. And I didn't. And it took time in God's word. And it took time carrying through. And it took even some waning of the supernatural to look around and go, Father, what's going on? What's, what's happening? And begin to realize it's intimacy, Daniel. It's intimacy, Daniel. God is calling Community Church to a new level of intimacy. We will see the waves of glory, I have no doubt. 
we will see the waves of people coming in and moving out. I have no doubt. But what it will wait on is for us to hunger and thirst for His presence. It's going to look like worship, but it can't be limited to here. It's got to be in our homes. And our worship can't only be the words we sing. It'll have to be the evidence of our lives, a life committed to the presence of God. And so you're going to hear me talking about practicing the presence of God and learning to be intimate with Him. And some of it will be my own personal journey. And some of it's going to be people that I look at that I say, I want what they have. Tell me about your intimacy with God. Because I'm convinced that if there's, if there's an equation, because I'm a math guy, I, I, I talk math, and I like to put things in equations because I can understand them a little better. If there's an equation, the thing that comes down to our responsibility from the way I read Scripture and the way I see God working, He never asked us to supply the power or the authority. He always said, my power, my authority. But He did ask us to supply the intimacy. Do you want a deeper level of intimacy with your Father? Do you want to know when God speaks to you that He supplied all the authority and all the power necessary to accomplish that's what, what He talks to you about? And that you know what you're hearing is His voice and it is the invitation to change your destiny? Because I'm looking at some people in West Orange and some people in Little Cypress and some people in Deweyville and Vider and Bridge City and the surrounding areas that desperately need a new destiny. And I'm not judging them. I'm just looking at the facts and saying, they're where I was. They, they are where I was 20 years ago. I want to join Jesus and what's on his heart for Orange County and the surrounding area. If that's your heart as well, I encourage you, press in. Talk to him. Spend time with him. Learn to hear his voice. And when he speaks... Don't question the power and authority. Just ask, Father, I'm hearing you. I'm stepping out and I'm trusting you to, to do what's already on your heart. And I'm telling you, we have yet to see the glory of God revealed. I believe it's going to look like some of the things we've talked about. It's going to look like young families that were headed for divorce court coming back together. And saying, I can choose to love. It's going to look like, maybe, it's going to look like sick people that you go and you, you, you walk by them and you say, hey, I believe God wants to heal you right now. Why do you think that? Because I heard it. You're hurting right here, right now. How'd you know? God told me. It's going to look like you're walking by a young teenage girl. And she's wearing long sleeves and you don't know but you God says she's hurting and she's hurting herself and you find a way to have a cup of coffee maybe or it's your neighbor you go do you know God loves you and the pain you're feeling isn't from him and I believe he wants to take away not only the scars on your heart but the scars on your arm too wouldn't it be good to be invited into that kind of moment just because we had ears to hear and eyes to see. That's the only thing he ever talked to the church about in Revelation. Return to your first love. He who has ears to hear and eyes to see. Let's return. Let's return for those who haven't heard the need to return yet. Let's do our part. Stand in the gap. Train our hearts to practice His presence and trust Him to supply anything lacking on our part based on His riches and His glory. Will you stand with me in worship tonight? Father, we come to You in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I want to stand with this body. And I'm standing not because I'm speaking, but because I want this to be the reality in my life that I never doubt the power or the authority when you talk to me. 
And I don't want to doubt whether it was your voice anymore. I don't want to get confused between my desires and your desires or feeling like maybe the enemy's even setting me up. I want to know when I hear your voice, what your voice sounds like, how you speak to me. And when I, when I hear that voice, when I feel that prompting, I know that you have supplied everything necessary to see it accomplished. And Father, I just know in my heart of hearts that you have given us everything we need, everything we need for the life that you've called us to. Father, there are people here tonight that, that have been spoken to through your spirit and been prompted, but they looked at their lives and they felt like they, they weren't good enough. They didn't have enough. They, they compared themselves to someone else. Lord, I ask that you begin to erase that lie from our minds. May it be by your might and by your power, not ours. May it be by your spirit, not my abilities. And Father, we, we declare that we will be a body that moves in the power and the authority of the kingdom of God. We want to pursue intimacy with you. And through intimacy comes instruction. We look for instruction. Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst. Thank you for the healings tonight. Thank you for the words of knowledge. Thank you that you haven't stopped speaking to us. And you want to invite us in more and more. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. Let's listen for our assignment. And let's pursue intimacy with all we've got. There's change on the other side of those doors. And the only thing between us and change is hearing the right voice at the right time. And stepping out in His power and His authority. And I can't wait to hear what God's going to do through your hands as you reach and bring life into a community that desperately needs the goodness of God. Amen.
sky and I will fall at your feet I will fall at your feet and I will worship you here my King yes Lord And I will fall at your feet, Lord. I will fall. We will fall at your feet. And then we will worship you, King. Cause I will fall at your feet. Cause we will fall at your feet. And I will worship you. Come to you, King, tonight. What are the King for? What are the King come down from the throne? Love your presence. And I love, I love. I just love your presence. Cause I love. I
In your presence. 